Okay, hello guys. Hey, uh, should be a pretty short video. I'm I'm basically just want to talk about the three questions that I get asked most more commonly than any other three, and they're they're pretty simple answers I think for the most part. So basically, the three questions or the three things that I want to cover right here is my Inkscape Ink Stitch looks different than what you're you're viewing. And simple answer for that, my params doesn't show. Um, most of the time they're saying when I'm trying to follow you along with a satin stitch, my satin stitch params is not showing up. And the most recent I got is mine won't satin stitch. Mine won't create a satin stitch. Can you help with that? So these are the three things that I'm going to cover. So yours looks different. That is... I'm not sure what degree of difference mine, my Inkscape or my Ink Stitch looks. If it's Inkscape, the there's two major reasons for that. Probably is you have to keep in mind that Inkscape and Ink Stitch, uh, they they are created to run in three different operating systems: Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now, I happen to be running in Linux. But the tools are the same, even if the look is a little different. Beyond that, I also retheme my Inkscape because I don't like the default theme. In Linux, I don't know if it's Linux, if it's every, every, if it looks the same in all of them, I don't know. But what I end up doing is I go to Preferences, Edit, Preferences, um, what is it? Uh, interface. Drop that interface down, and right here's theming. And I change this. It is by default. It is. I don't remember what it is. Anyway, I change it to use my system font, which is Breeze on KDE Plasma. If you don't know Linux, you don't know what that is. It's just a different theme. I also change icon theme, which is by default is high color is that right that is not right by default it is multicolor no dash okay i think that's the one that it is by default and i don't hate it i really don't but i'm just really used to this one that says tango you're on windows you're on mac you may or may not have the same theme i don't know but yeah, and then I go into toolbars. I change my toolbox icon size up a little bit so I don't have the little tiny button to push because I'm old. It is what it is. So there's some of the reasons why my Inkscape and or Ink Stitch looks different. I don't change anything under Ink Stitch. It's just, I just let it be the default, whatever it is, according to the theming that I change in Inkscape. Okay, so let's go on to, to the number two most common question or comment. My params doesn't show. That is usually because Inkscape or Ink Stitch will recognize what kind of object you have selected and it will give you the params for that object. For example, if I make a simple line and that's all I do and I hit extensions. Ink stitch rams for that simple line. I'm going to get a running stitch bean stitch because that's what it is. I don't have params up here at the top for fill or or satin stitch. All I get is a stroke. That's it. Now, if I want a satin stitch, I have to turn it into a satin stitch. I can do that a number of ways. I can duplicate it, pull it over to the side, grab the other one as well, hit uh, control K to combine, and now I'll have the option for satin column. Because it's a, it's a custom satin column is all I just did. So now I have the option for a satin column. Close that out. And another thing that might happen sometimes is, is you may draw a thing probably a little more fancy than this, and you'll put an outline on it. 
uh, say outline on that and then your nice pretty picture that you have here you think you've put an outline around it so that outline is going to automatically be a satin stitch but that's not that's not the case now if I go into this this is not a satin stitch this is a running stitch if you want it to be a satin stitch number one make sure it's wide enough to be a satin stitch which it is and then you can go to extensions ink stitch uh, let's see tool satin convert line to satin now it is a satin stitch I can reselect it hit extensions ink stitch params and now I have satin, satin column options in my params. And then what will often happen is a lot of people will make their pretty picture. They'll have that picture as a fill and they'll have an outline around it, but that's not two separate, separate objects. You really want them to be two separate objects. And, and again, you select it and you hit params thinking you're going to get. A lot of people will think individually that I have selected this one option and I want to change the fill or the satin parameters. In this case, you don't have satin, but you might be thinking satin and you open this up and go, well, where's my satin stitch? All I see here is fill stitch. Not what I wanted. This will actually, this one params box will actually change your, your stroke settings on the params and the fill stitch that is green. You can multiple select just like that. I'll show you an example. I'm going to go ahead and it's already selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, ink stitch, satin tools, convert line to satin. Yeah, it went ahead and got rid of the fill. So that's something new. I'm using the uh, testing variety, the testing version. So I'm not sure if that's in your stable release or not. But I had a fill and a stroke, converted that stroke to a satin. It got rid of the fill. So another good reason to make sure that you have it as two separate objects. So what you would do here is I have text down there. I have one object. This is my one object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set no stroke. So shift X, hit control D to duplicate it. Now I have two. Now I'm going to do no fill on that with a stroke. Looks exactly the same, but now it's two separate objects. Now I can take that one, that second one that I did, go ahead and ink stitch, satin tools, convert line to satin. Outstanding. Now I'm going to go ahead and select both of these, the fill and the satin. And I'm going to go to extensions, ink stitch, params. And I can adjust the params on both the satin object and the fill object at the same time. Right here is my satin column and the center walk, a contour, the zigzag, and all that. And I can continue to go on over to the fill stitch. So the green fill stitch, I can also apply params to. They will not interfere with each other, even though you're setting them at the same time. So very cool, very cool. All right, I think that's all that. And mine won't satin stitch, which is a comment that I just got on YouTube. My recommendation, if, if your ink stitch is running, if you can go to extensions, ink stitch about and get a description even if this box pops up and it only says ink stitch and you can see I'm running a test inversion here this means your ink stitch is working so you should be, your satin stitching should also be working the easiest way to test that is to draw a line or a box set the stroke paint don't set the stroke style to approximately 1.5. Just any number that's bigger than one. Hit extensions, ink stitch, tool satin, convert line to satin. 
Now that converted to a satin line, make sure you select your selector tool again and select that object. And then now that you've selected it, go ahead and do extensions ink stitch. Either you can do params to see that it's coming up. It's coming up as a satin stitch. Outstanding. You can also do extensions ink stitch visualize simulator. See that it's coming up as a satin stitch. So as long as it's doing that, then your ink stitch is working properly. If it's not doing that, then I don't know that I can help you because I don't program an ink stitch. Maybe. And if it, it could be a Windows antivirus thing, I guess. But uh, other than that, that's the easiest way to test if your ink stitch is properly working on satin stitches. And I can't think of an easier way. Okay, maybe, maybe this is an easier way. Just draw a line, duplicate it, duplicate, drag that duplicate around, grab both of them with shift click, control K, combine extensions, ink stitch, params, and satin column. Both of those to me are just pretty much as simple as the other. Because I'm, I've been using ink stitch for a while so try that if if it's still not working then let me know and we'll try to troubleshoot through it and if we can't get it to work and i'll show you how to post on get on github on their help discussion forum but other than that that is actually to be honest with you some of the most common questions that i get and private messagings and emails and sometimes YouTube comments. So anyway, hope that helps. Super quick video. After I edit this, it should be roughly about 10 minutes long, nice and quick to the point. And if you watched all the way through it, please do the, the YouTube clicky button things because they say I should ask you to do that, I guess. But other than that, that's all for this video. And as always, Thank you so much for watching.